Hi everybody, I'm Carol Martin. Welcome once again to Alive and Wellness. Coming up this Friday, turn visit from Dr. Carolyn Dean, whose specialty is homeopathy and acupuncture. She'll tell us how women with yeast infections can be helped by alternative medicine. It's an interesting way to end the week and we'll get started in just a minute here on Alive and Wellness. Thanks for joining us once again on Live and Wellness. We've got a good group here in the studio. Thank you all for being with us. Our first guest is going to share with us the latest information on a common condition known as candidiasis. Did I say it correctly, doctor? Yeah. Oh, good, okay. It's yeast infections. We mostly know it as that. She is the author of Complementary Prescriptions for Common Ailments, an Encyclopedia of Holistic Health. Please welcome for a return visit to Alive and Wellness, Dr. Carolyn Dean. Thanks, Dr. Dean. This is a topic that affects the lives, certainly, of m many women, a lot of men as well, so we're going to get more specific about it and learn how to say the word correctly. But first, let's talk about your training in alternative medicine and why you chose to do the research that you're doing now. I entered medical school with a knowledge of diet and nutrition, and I, I wanted to get my medical degree so that I could do things in a scientific manner. When we talk about candidiasis, for example, uh, up until a few years ago, there was no real diagnostic test or way of knowing what, how to diagnose it or, or how to present to a person a, a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. But there are blood tests for candidiasis, candida antibody tests. Now, what exactly is it? Let's talk first about right. that because it, there's a latent level of yeast in our body, yes? Right. That is good for us, that is natural. Yes, we all have some yeast in our bodies. And what seems to happen is um, under the influence of antibiotics, birth control pill, cortisone drugs, the normal yeast in the intestines overgrows. And when it overgrows, it produces up to 79 different toxins. And those toxins are what create the effects in the body. There are aldehyde, alcohol toxins, hormone toxins, all kinds of symptoms can be caused by those toxins. Well, now, when it's doing the right thing, what is yeast supposed to do for us? Well, yeast can um, help create certain um, balancing of um, vitamins in the intestinal tract. And there are, there are a few things that it can do, but it's not really necessary to have. It just is there. It's a commensural organism that that lives in, in concert with other bacteria. Mm -hmm. When those bacteria are killed off by too much antibiotic use, then the yeast will overgrow. It'll mm -hmm. mushroom, it would fill the room in a, in a day or two. I think we've all had some experience this way. I know tetracycline mm -hmm. often, when you take uh, that or some mm -hmm. other kind of antibiotics, they'll give you that reaction. Yes, you'll yes. be a yeast infection. The, uh, the intestines can cause, well, the intestines, you can get gas and bloating, diarrhea, constipation, mm -hmm. but mostly candidiasis is looked upon as women's ailment, just a, a simple yeast infection, but it can be more than that. Well, let's talk about what can it be at its worst, and especially these mm -hmm. symptoms, because mm -hmm. this is what's so, it can be a lurking mm -hmm. disease that people mm -hmm. don't realize is causing them problems. That's right. Um, the toxins, as I mentioned, can affect the brain. You can get brain fog, cloudiness, depression. Uh, it can cause dandruff. It could cause eye discharges, uh, sinusitis, um, coated tongue, sore throats. Uh, gastritis symptoms, uh, bladder symptoms. Nail funguses? Nail funguses. So it can cause so many things people tend to think, oh, it's too many things and it's... I'm under stress, I'm yeah. just, yeah. yeah. So how do you diagnose? You say the blood test is the... Well, I guess the point I'm trying to make is you could have a list of uh, 50 symptoms and you can't just say, well, that must be yeast. We have to be scientific. In complementary medicine, we are trying very hard to, to have the studies that prove what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are blood tests available, but it's not, uh, it's not available in ordinary medical um, laboratories, I'm told. It's more in um, specialty labs. So it's difficult to put your finger on this mm -hmm. diagnosis, mm -hmm. that's it. I guess what I'd like to stress is uh, 
patients should be uh, asking for these types of tests to be to be covered by insurance or to be available so they they can be diagnosed mm -hmm. you see if you think you have yeast and will get to treatment I'm sure and you avoid sugar or bread or dairy products you're probably going to feel much better anyway mm -hmm. and you can't say just because you feel better well I must have had candidiasis it gives it gives complementary medicine a bad name if we don't start with a proper diagnosis give a treatment repeat the testing and prove that the the disease is gone is gone from that yeah. mm -hmm. so if you go to a doctor and you're asking for what specific tests do you ask for it's a candida antibody test candida antibody test yeah. okay it's like in hepatitis antibodies are produce, produced to fight the hepatitis virus in AIDS antibodies are produced to fight the AIDS virus mm -hmm. so similarly in candidiasis there are antibodies that are formed as the body tries to fight this infection Mm -hmm. They're an indication that the body is working, of course, but it's you can have an overload. Overload at the same time. Right. Now, what's the worst case scenario if it's left untreated? Well, untreated, all the symptoms I mentioned, I've seen people with all of them. And what will happen is they'll be treated with, with drugs to treat the symptoms. Mm -hmm. A sore throat or ear infection, more antibiotics, um, getting allergies and sinusitis, they'll be given anti-allergy medications. Sore joints from the toxins settling in the joints, they'll be given cortisones. Mm -hmm. And all those drugs will help more yeast grow. It's masking. Yeah. the original problem yeah. yeah and then eventually I mean the case the severe cases I've seen people ending up in hospital have I mean I've seen people very very ill with this from it yeah because then it looks like other diseases when when the side well, that's effects the tricky the part I would imagine yeah, yeah that's yeah, why it's such a controversial topic but mm -hmm. uh, again men can suffer with this as well yes um, what happens with men oft times is um, they'll get an intestinal infection or, or say on a trip you'll get uh, traveler's diarrhea mm -hmm. and be treated sometimes with an antibiotic and then they'll end up with uh, maybe irritation of the penis and bladder, inf bladder irritation which then will be diagnosed as a bacterial infection they'll be given more antibiotics right. mm -hmm. and in fact that irritation may be yeast at the core, yes, yeah, at, at the, at the, the heart of it. Yeah. And uh, men too can have asthma and allergies and be treated with antibiotics and cortisones and develop mm -hmm. yeast. It almost sounds as if it's 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 a culprit in almost everything that feels like it could be wrong. Is that I don't like an to say that. Well, I know, but that's how it's presented in some of the lay books about candidiasis and. Yeah. So be cautious about that. Yes, it's not that yeah, uh, yeah. sinister, and I guess. Huh? I don't think so. I think it's something to be aware of. And as I said, the, the treatment can be simple in the beginning stages. But, for example, antibiotics. We all need them at times. However, in Europe, when doctors prescribe antibiotics, they also tell people to eat yogurt. Yes, I was going to ask about that. Or take acidophilus bacteria along with it. This acidophilus bacteria will repopulate the intestines with the good bacteria. Acidophilus is a good thing. That That's bacteria, right. uh -huh. That bacteria is a good thing. Is a good thing. And um, that will um, mean that the yeast won't overgrow. This bacteria will come in and keep the population down. Mm -hmm. So right at the beginning, if, if a person is taking antibiotics, eat yogurt if you're allergic Any to... Any antibiotics? Any, any antibiotics. Just start with yeah. a yogurt yeah. run as well. Yeah. If you're allergic to dairy products, then you can take acidophilus in pill or capsule form. Go ahead, you were about to I make a left final point. I was just going to say, yeah. try to take the acidophilus from the refrigerator section of the health food store because if it's live, it should be uh, refrigerated. Now, there are some specific things, too, that have to do with changing our diets, which mm -hmm. we're going to get into as, sort of as a preventive measure, yes? Because how do mm -hmm. you know if your yeast level, if you don't have these symptoms, right. could we be like right on the verge of it? Right. Going into... Well, it, it tends to come when you do, do a, a drug, an antibiotic, etc., but if you eat too much sugar, then uh, you can grow yeast. For example, there are people who eat so much sugar, they create an alcohol in their body that um, will lead to a breathalyzer test being positive for blood alcohol levels. Just from eating sugar? Sugar, yeah. Really? Um, think of fermenting wine. 
if you make wine, you put a bit of yeast, you put the fruit, mm -hmm. and together they create this wine and alcohol. We can right. do that in our stomach. In our stomach as well. Mm -hmm. Birth control pills can be affecting that as yes. well, but hold the thought for a moment because we're going to take a short break and come right back to find out how to naturally prevent yeast infections. Thank you.